In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the rear wheel bearing in this Jeep Grand Cherokee. Remove the wheel. We're using a 22 millimeter socket. Take the lug nuts off. Pull the wheel off. I'm gonna take the caliper and bracket off together using an 18 millimeter socket. Take these bolts out. and slide the caliper and bracket off using a caliper hanger. I'm just gonna hang this from the coil spring and out of the way. Then we're gonna take the rotor off, just take a hammer, give it a tap in these areas. Just be careful, you don't wanna hit the studs. Slide that off. I'm gonna take off the axle nut. I'm gonna use a one and one quarter inch socket. Remove the ABS sensor so it doesn't break. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this bolt out. And just grab the sensor. Might have to wiggle it a little bit. On our vehicle, this is rusted in there pretty good, so we're not gonna take it out over there, but we are gonna follow the wire and take the push clips off and disconnect it. I'm just gonna use a trim tool. Pop those out. Disconnect the connector. A little lock tab. There we go. And push down on the tab. Slide that out. Pull the line back. Oh, there is another retainer up top here. Slide that out. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter wrench on the inside on the nut, an 18 millimeter socket, take this bolt out. It's just gonna be loose. And we're gonna take this bolt and nut out, use an 18 millimeter wrench on the bolt, 18 millimeter socket on the nut. this a little. Slide the bolt out. We're going to take this bolt out, 18 millimeter wrench on the back, 18 millimeter socket. Take the parking brake shoes off. If you have a special tool, you can use that to take these clips off, or I just use a trim tool, push in, and just slide this back. Slide that off. Same on the other one. Just pry this out. Now we're gonna pull the adjuster out. I'm just gonna pry this apart. You can use a pry bar.
get the adjuster off, pull that out. We can get the spring out. Slide that out. We'll just tip this down. Take this spring out. There we go. Just take these pins out just so I don't lose them. And pop the axle out. Just use a punch. Just slide this out. You can bungee this out of the way. Now we're going to use a bearing puller. Line this up. Correct adapters. I'm going to pull the hub right through the bearing. Some dirt and debris in here. I'm just going to use a wire brush and clean this up so we can take the snap ring out. Now we're going to take the snap ring out. I'm just going to find the opening and if you can get a straight blade screwdriver under there, just be careful. I just want to pop underneath it. Might need a couple screwdrivers or pry bars. And just watch your eyes. And it comes right out. Now I need to press the bearing out from the back side. We're going to pull it through. I need to find an adapter that's larger than the hole, but slightly smaller because we do still have our ABS sensor in there. We don't want to break that. If you had the cup too big, then it's going to push on the sensor. So make sure it's smaller than the sensor if you still had your ABS sensor in there. If you were able to get it out, then you don't have to worry about that. going to clean up this area just using a wire brush. Get any of the rust or debris and then right up to where the end of the ring is going to sit or where the hub is going to sit. You can see there's a little lip right there. So. Take the new bearing. There is a side with a magnet on it. That's going to go where the ABS is. So that's going to go in. I want the silver side out. Line that up. Then we're going to use a press. And you need a cone that's bigger on the outside to press it in. You want, ideally, you want something that's just smaller than the outside of the bearing, you want to be pushing right on that edge. So we're going to eventually use this cup right here, but to start it, I'm just going to use the larger section, put that in, and you might have to get creative. Then on the inside, you're going to want a bigger cup so that it doesn't pull it through the knuckle. That's the opposite of taking it out. As we tighten this, it's just going to be pushing it in.
And there it is, bottomed out. Just make sure it's tight. That's all the way down. Loosen up the tool. Slide that off. Take the snap ring. It's always a good idea to replace it. Get that lined up. And just push it in. There you go. With the old hub, you want to remove the race. There's many different ways you can do this. One way is tipping it upside down and then heating with a torch as you spin it and then the race will just slide down. Probably the easiest way to do it, but you could also cut it off with a die grinder or some kind of wizard wheel that would work as well. Now we're going to press this in. You need a rod to go through and on the back side you want a cup that's smaller than the race so that you're pushing on the race and not pushing on the outside of the bearing. I will press it in. Now I'll just loosen it up. And take the tool off. I can take the half shaft down, the CV axle. Get that lined up. And get the control arm in. Get the nut started. I'll put all the other ones in as well. Get the nut on. Using a pull jack, I'm going to raise up on the suspension. You want to get it as close to ride height as possible. It would be ideal to lower the vehicle and torque these bolts all while the vehicle's on the ground, but that's not always ideal. So just get it close while still being safe. And I'll torque this bolt and nut to 79 foot-pounds. This one is going to be 79 foot-pounds also. This top one is going to be 81 foot-pounds. I can lower the suspension. Take the pole jack out. And I'll put the axle nut on. Get that started. With a pry bar, I'm just going to prevent the hub from spinning and have it against the ground. I'm going to torque the axle nut to 229 foot-pounds. Now we're going to take the parking brake shoes, get these lined up. I still have the springs in the bottom one. spring. I'm just using some locking pliers on the spring. Just pry that up. Get that spring in there. Those are in the right spot. Put the pins in. Those lined up, get these clips. Get 
tap those on. Do the same on the other one. Take the top spring, slide that in position. Once that's in, you can spread this apart, take the adjuster, get that started. Just pry it out. Slide that in place, just like that. That's good. I'll put the ABS sensor back in if you took it out. We're going to put this bolt back in, just snug, and run the wire. that retainer in. Take the connector, line it up, and lock it down. Should be good. Take the rotor, line it up. That's on. Now take the hanger off the caliper. Slide the brake caliper over the rotor. Make sure the brake pads are spread. Now take the hanger off the caliper. Slide the brake caliper over the rotor. Make sure the brake pads are spread. Put the bolts in. those down. Torque those to 89 foot-pounds. Put the wheel on. Put the lug nuts on. Now I'm going to torque the lug nuts to 115 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Just go around again, double check. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.